hi everyone and welcome back welcome to our playlist how to become a ninja developer and uh, this is another video and in this video we are going to talk about uh, building the rest apis okay what are the best practices you must follow while building the rest apis i mean the framework and the technologies can be anything you might be writing in java you might be writing in the node.js go python django whatever but the rest api standards are still same how you should do the resource naming how you should define the http methods how you are defining the response types and all so i'm going to take a simple example of our uh, simple code here this is something a simple nest js code and uh, here we are exposing things through the swagger so i'm building a rest api i mean i'm not writing the whole code here it is just a simple user controller and here we are adding and defining all different routes for the users okay so first of all our resource naming so what i'm doing is if you look into the swagger docs for this it looks something like this okay because i exposed i configured a swagger with my nest js application so i'm able to see the swagger docs that looks like this now my resource name is users okay on this resource name users on this resource name users you will be defining all the routes okay user this is simply list of users then user by id user delete user by id update user by id so all these resource naming should be explicit whatever you are doing so let's say when you start writing these apis what will happen is this is http get the resource name is users okay it can be the prefix url can be api v1 it should be plural and then you will be writing okay give me a single user by resource particular by id this is http get users by id so i'm looking for a particular resource from this list here if you out wants to do the update here if you want to do the delete i'm deleting a particular resource i'm updating a particular resource and you can also do a patch for the partial update okay now this is just a simple your users api this are this this is how the resource naming you will adopt okay now let's say from the users what you what else we can do uh, there is a nested uh, resource from the users is let's say the books because these are just nouns and you will read it like this so users this is my id this is my id i am looking for all the books which are assigned to this particular user id right so this is how the resource naming will work users okay i am getting this particular user having this id and i now want all the books okay this is simply get this is how you will be doing the nested resource so users books let's say i want to do the put or i want to just get a particular book which is assigned to this particular user id so books id so here if you read it correctly api v1 users all the users i'm looking for this particular user id the books which are assigned to this user id and i'm looking for only this particular book having this book id assigned to this user having this user id right now you can define all the methods for it http get put if you want to update this particular book id or if you want to delete this resource from this user now in the api code you will you will validate okay i give me all the books for this user give me all the uh, book first of all give me this user id give me all the books for this user id and then i'm updating only this particular id right so these all are uh, how you define the the resources and how you put the the namings right so there are lots of documentations available for this like what all different methods we have get put post delete patch and this is how you will be doing the resource naming the plural books users and then book particular id delete post patch okay and when it comes to the nested resources like i am giving me this particular user and give me the order of this particular user having order id this 
right these are like best practices you will be following and when it comes to the field selection filtering sorting searching pagination you can just pass those things as a query params like okay give me all the users having country uk give me all the users whose creation date is this and greater than this okay searching sorting you can just specify the parameters as a query params so uh, here we are passing all these things as a path param here you can pass things as a query params field selection you wanted to just uh, fetch only these particular list or you wanted to pass only some field parameters then you can just pass them as a comma separated so i know that field is the property and these are the values you are looking for okay and then your api should have proper status code of everything so you can see here this is a simple example i have created i am already documenting that these are the api exceptions this it can throw 401 403 404 uh, 500 and all because we are doing all those validations here so because currently it's uh, not something so this is the user's api i didn't even update the description okay uh, api operation list of all the users returns list of all the users this is api operation and this is api okay response because this is api is expected to return 200 status code right and then you can also specify the types let's say i'm doing get similarly you can also add another methods this is get users because we are building the rest apis so get users you can pass the query parameter or i don't have any criteria so i want to return all the users and the user has the property let's say the name email right these are the two properties i am returning from these apis so we can also expose like what kind of response these apis are going to return so we can use the dto for that user list response this is let's say it is going to return the id id is also some kind of a uuid so we can copy some dummy response this is my controller okay now how can i explain through the swagger doc that this is going to return these three properties only and i can expose those to the swagger so id name email so i have id i have name and we have another property is email so you just need to use these swagger docs api response property and then you can expose all these properties in the DTO. Okay, name email, user list response. Okay, so what you can specify is this is going to return 200 status code. Here you can set a type. User list response is already of type array. and you import the user list response okay now your swagger doc i will just update these methods also so this is a search uh, get users this will be get user by id this is let's say update user by id and let's say this is delete user now if you go to your swagger you should be able to read these uh, properly okay this is not updated maybe i need to kill this and then rerun it npm run start dev this is my simple controller i mean these are the different uh, same routes so first of all i didn't update the code properly 
this is get all the users then this is get user by id this method is a delete which is going to give me no content when you are deleting a resource similarly this is uh, what uh, post update user by id so i will be just passing the id here this is going to be the put and this is going to return me the ok status code and this is get by id so we are fine with that we also need to use the validations for this id right so because this is a path parameter you are sending so i will be using param and we can just do something in the dto for that so here i can just use export class get user by id dto so here it should be api property an id and here you can just define your validation criteria like this is going to be the uuid is uuid should be okay uh, that's it that's enough uh, is uuid get user by iddto and then you will use this get user by iddto in your controller everywhere to do the validation so this is param okay so now the validations will be applied because we are already using validation pipe here so it will and we are putting the correct types using class validator so this is update user by id this is delete user by id everywhere we are passing this id to delete a resource this is again id let's update this okay now if i just try to refresh it is it reloading automatically no so let's go and npm run start dev okay and let's see this and now you can see all the resources populated and you can also see the description here like okay this is going to return all the list of users and this is the example value so writing these clean and concise structure really helps to understand okay what is the status code what is the first of all what is the api description what are the query parameters let's say these are having query parameters of type uuid this is the example value and these are the status code it can return right i need to update the message descriptions but this is how you will do it right and swagger will automatically reflect all the responses so now you can also create a nested another route because here this is a user controller right now you can have another controller is user book controller or let's say uh, book controller books controller and this will be on top of users so api v1 users and then books right so let's keep it only users and then here the ids will be okay i wanted to get all the books so id give me all the books so get books simple method similarly i want to get the users is already there i want to get this user id and then all the books and then there is a book id book id right so okay these are enough for talking about example so here i updated the the routes and this is my book controller i have created so this is like a nested resource on top of users users this is a books controller and this is books api tag okay so get books get books book id here we need to change these dto's first of all this is fine for get books here also we need to pass the dto this is get user by id dto and here we need to add another dto that dto will do something different 
because here we have two IDs book ID and UUID. I will have a book underscore ID get user books by IDDTO. Okay, I will add that inside a book controller because now we are passing two different path params book ID and the ID. Return the list of uh, books or the user, update all these API descriptions, and here you might be returning something else the name of the book and the id of the book okay then you can just uh, have a different response dto for that so here i have this so i will create another response dto for that get a uh, book list response and i just have a name no email and i can use this in my controller Return the list of all the user books. Okay, and uh, when you run it, I need to restart the application. And I also need to add the book controller in my main module. Currently, I'm not uh, using any folder structure. I'm just talking about two different controllers, how to play with the, the Nest CS. You might be writing this in either express or any other framework the strategy applies same this is just like a common principles which you should apply everywhere either you write in the express or any other uh, framework this is how your api resource naming should be and uh, then you can also talk about the paginations uh, searching sorting how the api structure should be and you can see the different API tag here I'm what I'm looking for give me all the books for this user ID and this is how it is going the response is going to be I need to get the UUID right and give me all the give me that particular book for the particular user ID right from the book list so here we are passing two path params ID and the book ID I mean I have posted millions of videos I will say on the next CS and this is just a simple example how you expose through the swagger based on the resources and this is how these are the things which you must follow while defining the apis the proper documentation the proper status code that api will be returning like delete will return no content update will return okay uh, then you might be having create user right <coughs> so inside the user controller there can be a post api so currently we have get users right we are not creating user right now so let's say I do have post also it is going to create uh, return created 201 so it will return created user in the response I, we will update it so this is a create user right and this is going to take a payload as an input right so here it will be we will pass body payload and we need to create some DTO create user dto right so get user instead of this i will just do a create user dto and we'll define that inside this dto export class and we'll just pass the the name and the email that's it so this is name is of type string Okay, it should be API property, not API response property. So this DTO is actually request payload, right? So here API property and we can just add a validation. Age string is defined. So these are the required properties. Name and email both are required. You can also add is email so we don't need to do the email validations this is being done through the class validator create user dto and then import this create user dto in your controller right create user dto and it returns something like this so it will expose through the swagger also okay and uh, for api okay response it should be api created response 
because we are not returning 200 status code we are returning 200 one if we created response then this is going to give us this user list response because it will be a single object not a list we are creating a user so it will be a post create user okay then let's update it and then we will be done with this and we'll move forward okay so if i created i still need to update the descriptions and all but i think you can take care of that so here you can see this is the example value of the payload this is how you will be passing and once user is created this is going to return you the 201 status code with this is the response payload right so this is how you should structure your apis similarly for pagination searching and sorting you will be passing things as a query parameter query parameter right so what i will do here is let's say i want to search a user then search will still return 200 status code okay and here i'm doing is get it should be simple search let's say search is not a resource name first of all but what we are doing is api v1 user search or simply you can do with the get also because get we already have either we can update this get method which is giving us the list of all the users right here we can pass the query parameter so we don't need to define the new method that's the the right way of doing it here we can pass these query params and we can define the query params having page limit offset and then this api will become the paginated api right what we will do is we can simply do query and simply is user list query dto and inside that you pass all your parameters so this is my dto and inside this export class so here you can pass page limit offset and all all will be passed as a string because uh, these are the query parameters page limit and search text let's say you are just passing a random search and based on that you will be applying the search search text is of type string user list query dto you can pass anything and then you put that inside this dto controller and this is again you are going to return the list of the responses right list of all the users restart your applications and let's see npm run start dev and we just updated this users api now it is taking these query parameters like search text page limit offset whatever sort by order by all these things and you are just applying the search on top of this api we don't need a new api because we are already fetching all the resources now on top of that we are just applying the filters searching sorting so we can just use this api okay this is all about rest api standards to become a ninja developer you can build on top of that explore and learn research all those things you can do